Welcome to another episode of I Know Jax. I'm Joe Talentino. It's been a week, hasn't it? I don't know what happened, but this week I was so ready for the weekend. I need a vacation. I know my job is a vacation. All I do is locate fun things to do in our area. And when you do that for a living, you don't really need a vacation. Now it's 2014 now, and we're heading towards 2100. And I wonder when we're going to change and start saying 2014. It's quicker and easier to say, but I get this awkward feeling of playing a part in a sci-fi movie every time I try that. Back in 2014, when the dark forces attacked planet Earth, I do that often, you know. I'm a sought after actor, especially in sci-fi movies. I look really good in those silvery spandex suits. Not. <laughs> this weekend, I had the privilege of directing Kevin Porter in a Punisher short film. Kevin looks really good in his uniform. That's what it's called, not a costume or a suit, it's a uniform. I learned that the hard way this weekend. But let's get on with the show. First, I met up with some people who also like to dress up, but they don't wear spandex. To them, it's all about the plaid. We, um, well, we have various Scottish um, events. We have a, a athletics, heavy athletics, which is um, throwing, only, throwing big rocks. And well, we have large men throwing heavy things. <laughs> we have uh, the caber, which is right. most people call the telephone pole. We yeah. have the tossing of the stones for distance, uh, tossing of the weight for height and distance, throwing of the sheaf. And that's sheep, not sheep, <laughs> exactly. and the hammer throw, yeah. and um, it's open to women too. We also um, have Highland dance competition. Mm -hmm. We have Scottish country dancing. We have Scottish dogs. We have um, the various clans the, do that they you parade, could, right? We do it. We do a. Um, the opening is mass bands. We have a children's area that has been studied by other games in the southeast. It's really cool. It is. It is really great. And we they have, get to toss the caber and the rocks and stuff. Exactly. Well, which is cool. Downsized, of course. Yeah, exactly. We also have um, battle axe competition. We have. Um, I rock at that, by the way. We have um, <laughs> archery. Yeah. We have vendors with uh, Scottish theme clothing, jewelry, whatever. Plus. Um, we have a couple of food vendors that you can actually, if you want to try haggis or yeah. four for brides or meat pies <laughs> yeah. you, and, or, and some iron brew, you yeah. got it. Yeah, yeah. So tell me a little bit about what is Scottish food exactly? Uh, well, it depends on whether you're from Scotland, whether it's good or not. Actually, <laughs> the... the um, I know about haggis. That seems to be one everybody Haggis, ha and if you don't know what haggis is, is uh, to put it in southern terminology, it's sausage. Right. But it's... Um, ground bits and pieces <laughs> stuff um, with barley and spices and it's stuffed into a sheep stomach that's been cleaned out of, yeah, course, yeah, yeah, of course and uh, boiled and if you like a pate or you like liver or you like any it's just it's out of this world yeah. you, you have a little cracker and you put a little HP sauce on it and it's just fantastic <laughs> I love it yeah we have five food vendors two of them specialize in Scottish food that's pretty neat yeah I didn't know there was that many types of Scottish food. <laughs> oh, you, well, if you have um, neeps and tatties, now that's the specialty that I make. You said tatties, right? Neeps and tatties. Oh, gotcha. What neeps and tatties are actually is turnips and potatoes. And the way that I fix it, now in Scotland, what we call a rutabaga is what they call a turnip. Turnip, yeah. So, but um, you mix it with the potatoes. You can either get clap slop shot where you mix it up a little bit, but I like to mix in, make it like mashed potatoes with mm -hmm. a little sour cream and some butter, and it's really good. Doesn't sound bad at all. It's not bad <laughs> at all. I'm at the Clay County Fairgrounds for the Scottish Games and Festival. Bring the family out February 22nd to Clay County Fairgrounds for a bonny good time. It's all for the wee ones and the mom and pops also. With a name like Talentino, 
I am sure you've already guessed why the Scottish Festival is so important to me. No? <laughs> it's simple. I enjoy all the different sports they have at the event and I really enjoy people watching. I'm actually pretty good at axe throwing myself, but the kilt is not a very flattering look for me. My legs are too long and too white. Let's move swiftly from Scotland and whiskey to craft beer in our backyard. In last week's episode, I interviewed Brian Miller from Bold City Brewing Company, and this week we're heading over to their neighbors on King Street. Today I'm at Intuition Ale Works with founder Ben Davis. How you doing, man? Pretty good. How are you? So tell me how you got started in this whole thing, man. How I got started? Uh, obviously, I love beer and uh, home brewed and just how, how come? Obviously, yeah, obviously. <laughs> and uh, for my sheer uh, <laughs> slim figure, but um, we started. I started home brewing in college and yeah. just kind of brewed for fun as a hobby and decided this was something that I could do and right. so I went for it. You said I'm good at this. Why not, yeah, right? kind of, yeah. I can fake it. <laughs> fake it till you make it? Yes. So what was the first thing you did? Well, obviously find a location. Right. Um, that took a while. Yeah. And then I uh, started purchasing equipment, which is, again, takes a while. And every time I come here, it seems like you've got another big tank. It's like yeah. crazy. I mean, that's right now with the industry, how fast we're growing. That's right. the biggest challenge is uh, growing because we can't get fermenters as quick as we need them. So that's, 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 a, that's a good it's problem. It's a good problem, <laughs> but still it's a problem. Exactly. Yes. Well, tell me about the like the beers that you brew. Tell us a little bit about those. I mean, starting out, I was really inspired by West Coast style ales. Gotcha. I lived on the, in Sonoma County in Northern California for a right. while. Love Lagunitas, love Sierra Nevada Stone, gotcha. Anchor. I really like that that style of ale. Right. And so that was kind of where I started as far as um, really determine what styles we want to make, what recipes we wanted to brew. Right. And I just kind of went from there. And, and now, you know, we've really got some popular styles like our Peoples, our I-10 uh, right. IPA, and then our John Boat. And then we also brew a lot of smaller batches in our tap room. Well, those are the ones that you can find at pretty much any supermarket yes, locally, Yeah, the right? I-10, the John Boat, and the Peoples are, are available most, should be available everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. We're everywhere. Gonna say, we're going to say everywhere. And that's, that's what these little pretty cans are, if you were wondering. Yes. Now, as far as the other beers you brew, you have some other pretty good staples as well. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about some of those. Well, King Street Stout is kind of like our fourth core right, beer. It's, right. um, I didn't it's, know you didn't can that. No, we don't. Yeah, we, we're pretty much uh, maxed out with what we can can. Right. Um, but uh, with the King Street, it was just an imperial stout that we decided to right. brew. Just give us kind of a dark beer yeah. out of the gates. And now we're brewing anywhere between, I would say, four to five different dark beers that okay. we have on tap in our tap room anywhere cool. from a from a we do a black rye ale to a black saison yeah. to a porter a bunch of different styles you know my favorite all-time craft beer is an intuition intuition beer and it's uh, the honey badger yes yeah, honey i badger. love the honey uh, badger you guys don't do it enough though yeah it's it's something we try to get on the, back the, by popular demand yes. come on yeah, yeah. you can do it for me right well saison's <laughs> a little challenging to brew you know they oh is it uh, okay. yeah and so we we have to brew them kind of all in sequence and okay. use the yeast over and over again. Gotcha. And so the Honey Badgers typically has to be brewed with some other beers. But it's so awesome. Yeah, it's a fun beer. And you can't get it in the growler, so you got to come here and do it. Right, and, right. And it's right. like, okay. Yeah. And then catching There's it. There's probably some other brewery out there that's already Timing wise, packaged that's... it and they're going to sue us at some point. <laughs> really? Yeah, probably. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> um, talk to me about what we see for intuition in the future. I mean, the future is, I mean, we're going to grow. We're going to grow, right? Yeah, we're going to no grow. doubt about yeah. that. Um, I mean, you know, we want to grow smart and grow, you know, w with, a, with a mission. Uh, we're going to keep brewing the beers that we like brewing. And, um, you know, hopefully this time next year we'll be in a new facility. Right. Uh, we'll still operate this one in some capacity. Okay. But we just, we need more square footage and taller ceilings to, to really achieve what I think we can. Now, you said brew with a mission. What's that mission? I just make good beer, the beers that we're proud make of. Make good beer. Yeah. How about that yeah. for a mission? I like that. I'll drink to that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just beers that we're proud of and we believe in. You know, and that's to me, that's what's so important about craft beer is, you know, I don't have an accountant or I don't have a marketing guy telling me what to brew. We right. brew what we want to it's brew. It's like, hey, let's try this. Yeah, I brewers typically tell me what they want to brew. That's and very I think cool. the moment that we get so big 
to where we can't do that anymore, that's when I'm, you know. Time to stop. Yeah, I'll bail. And bail. I'll <laughs> sell, sell out some, and go yeah, start over again. <laughs> right, right. So we'll see. I mean, I think for us, it's just to keep going and growing smart. Well, I appreciate you having us tonight. Sure. We'll see you guys again in the next Beer Guy segment. Sure. If you missed our interview with Brian Miller from Bold City, you can find it on our website, iknowjacks.com. Or if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, you'll get a notification as soon as we upload new videos. So far, we've been to Bold City and Intuition. In next week's episode of I Know Jax, we're going to visit Ardwolf. Do you think it'd be fun to work on I Know Jax? Well, we're looking for interns and volunteers. Go to iknowjax.com, click on About Us, and look at the Job Opportunities section. Twenty fourteen, twenty fourteen. I still get the feeling I should be wearing silvery spandex when I say that, but this too will pass. I have seen massive changes in my lifetime, going from film to digital, landlines to mobile phones, computer monitors to Google Glass. That's what I'm wearing right now, by the way. Virtual glasses. I'm actually surfing the internet while I'm talking to you. That's how come I'm posting on Facebook right now. <laughs> Maybe that will come in 2014, but I would have to get better at multitasking before any of that would work for me. Now, thanks for watching I Know Jax. I'll be back again next week, and until then, I'll see you on the internet. <laughs> <laughs>